This is Firebase. I'm your host, Dr. Gary French. Thanks for tuning in this evening to another edition of what we like to say, where we target the lies by firing for effect with God's truth. Friends, on tonight's show, which is sponsored by Firebase Coffee, we want you to know that we're talking with a dear friend of mine, Pastor Mark Cowart from Colorado Springs, Colorado. He has an event that's coming up, and we're going to be talking about that event, and I'd like to get some information about uh, how it all came about. But before we transition to that, let me share this with you. In case you didn't know it, we have an election that's rapidly approaching, and very soon our nation will once again have an opportunity to vote for our next president. Many other state offices will be decided and depending upon where you happen to live. And my friends, you need to know this. Who we put in office affects our nation and it affects every single one of you. Well, I hear a lot of people arguing over the, the last election of which I'm dubious about because I'm convinced that politicians on both sides, unfortunately, will cheat. But we need to make sure that they don't do that this go around. And while people are arguing about our democracy and that we're losing it and, and they don't seem to have the grasp on what our United States of America really is as a constitutional republic, that means this. We, the people, elect others to office to represent us. And that is if we can trust the election process. And I, I don't know about you. But I really miss the days when we used paper ballots and had the decision the very same day instead of having to look for somebody to discern whether a hanging chad was a hanging chad or not a hanging chad. John Adams, one of the founding fathers, said our Constitution was made only for moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the office of any other. Morality and virtue are the foundation, friends, of our republic, and it's necessary, as he would say, for society to be free. My guest will know these words as well from Ben Franklin. He was asked by Elizabeth Willing Powell, not my guest, but Benjamin Franklin, this question, well, doctor, what have we got, a republic or a monarchy? His response is priceless if you can keep it. Friends, let's welcome Pastor Mark Cowart to our show this evening. Pastor Mark, thank you for coming on Firebase. Well, thank you for having me, and it's just a blessing to be with you again, Brother Gary. You know, I miss our times. We used to end up in Washington, D.C. together at least annually. That's for right. the Watchman on the Wall, and I got to tell you, that's where we met, and I, I miss that time, and it's I just good too. to be back with you here. Yeah, this is this is good. I, I like to say and you you really are. Uh, you're a very dear and cher cherished friend to me. And in ministry, I've I've come to learn to appreciate because it's very few and very seldom uh, individuals that I can call dear and cherished friends. And it may be because I'm not very likable, but I appreciate <laughs> I appreciate that you and I are friends. Yes. Hey, listen, this I've, I read this also about Benjamin Franklin, and he was at the time, this is from seven, September 7th, 17th, September 17th, 1787. He was asked to give a speech. Uh, it was prepared by him. He, Franklin was 81 years old at the time, and he was afflicted with gout and a kidney stone, and he wasn't able to read the speech himself, so he gave it to a delegate, a fellow delegate from Pennsylvania uh, by the name of Wilson, and it was addressed to George Washington, uh, who was the convention president. And so he was able to read this speech. And Franklin gave this address with a great note of humility. And this is what he said. I confess that there are several parts of this Constitution which I do not at present approve, but I am not sure I shall never approve them. For having lived long, I have experienced many instances of being obliged by better information or fuller consideration to change opinions, even on important subject, which I once thought right, but found to be otherwise. It is therefore that the older I grow, the more apt I am to doubt my own judgment and pay more respect to the judgment of others. And he goes on in that very brief statement, and he says these words, I think a general government necessary for us. And there is no form of government but what may be a blessing to the people if well administered. And believe further that this is likely to be well administered for a course of years 
and can only end in despotism as other forms have done before. Here's the important. When the people shall become so corrupted as to need a despotic government. Pastor Mark, I've got to ask you this as we start before we get into the conference that you've got coming up. What do you think about the what Adams and then Franklin also had to say at the very start of our great republic? Brother, you know, there's so much stirring inside of me right now. But the one thing I remember, I was watching a news uh, cast one night, and it was a fiery debate about very controversial subjects, life, death, morality, immorality. And I just went and I said, you know, some of these conversations shouldn't even be taking place because of what you referred to a while ago, where John Adams said, our Constitution which is the supreme law of the land. That's right. It's made only for religious and immoral people. Now, when they said religious, Brother Gary, that that was referring to Christianity. And no doubt, without question. That He said that there's no other way to restrain these passions of the human heart other than through Christianity and morality that is imparted to our children. So, brother, I was just sitting here thinking how far we've drifted. And, you know, we used to teach children to read so they could read the Bible. The Bible was one of our main textbooks. We had the New England Primer, and we used Christianity as the foundation upon which this great nation was built. So much is going through me. I love this country, and I believe most your listeners do too as well. Amen. Amen. And, you know, just this morning we had prayer. And it's righteousness that exalts the nation, Amen. not the Republican Amen. or the Democrat. Amen. It's righteousness. Amen. And Amen. Sin is a reproach to any people. So, brother, we've got to get back to the foundational issues of what Amen. made this great nation. Pastor Mark, you make a great comment to, for a perfect segue to a short video clip that we want to share with the audience about an event you have coming up September 15th through 19th, Equipping the Days Ahead, Prayer, Prophecy, and Spiritual Warfare. Let's play that clip right now, Jonathan. We live in one of the most turbulent times in history, and the current spiritual warfare demands our immediate attention. Join pastors Mark Cowart and Calvin Johnson of Church for All Nations in Colorado Springs, September 15th through the 19th, as they host the Equipping for the Days Ahead Prayer, Prophecy, and Spiritual Warfare Conference. Join these special guests for deep insights into spiritual warfare. General Kurt Fuller. You use prayer as a weapon, attack with it, not only to protect yourself and your family and whoever else is involved, but use it to attack. Researcher and author Bill Federer. That was the understanding of the phrase separation of church and state was to keep the government from telling the church how to have church. Missiologist Fred Markert. The reason the church isn't praying and fasting like we should and doing what we should is we don't know in America, we're in a bubble. We don't know how close we are to collapse. Prophet Ed Trout. We need God people that will be dedicated to him. There has to be a self-denial to be a disciple of the Lord. The reward is phenomenal. Prophet Joseph Z. If things are too small, men fight. If it's big enough, I believe they will unite. And I see the Spirit of the Lord bringing that type of movement uh, to answer this crazy battle we're seeing right now. And worship with Melody Noel of Influence Music. This is going to be a time of equipping and impartation. And because there's a lot that is happening in our nation right now, we want to make sure that we are ready. Register now to attend this historic equipping conference. This conference is free. Register at churchforallnations.com slash conference. That's churchforallnations.com slash conference. Wow, Pastor Mark, that looks like it's going to be a dynamite conference, and uh, we've got oh, we've got about ninety seconds before our first break here, and I, I need to ask you this very quickly, and we'll continue this discussion after the commercial. But what is this conference all about? How how did it stir in your heart to to develop this? 
Well, Brother Gary, it actually came about by the Holy Spirit, uh, Pastor Calvin Johnson there, who I call my brother from another mother. We got together and the Lord began to breathe on it. And it was birthing this conference. And uh, I know we're coming up on a break and and I'll I'll dissect that out a little bit. But I really believe because of the days ahead, we need to be equipped. And if we're not equipped, we may not walk in the victory that God intends us to. So I'll share more of that when we come back. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And, and I'm, I want you to unpack that uh, if you can when we get back about the days ahead. I, I find that when I when I have a guest on, they say a phrase that sort of jumps out at me, and I, I'm pretty confident you and I, as fellow uh, believers in Jesus Christ only, we have an idea of what the days are ahead, but we are not resolving ourselves like a defeatist person or a, uh, or should I say a predestination type person that says that makes no different difference what we believe or uh, what we're going to do. It's going to, I, I'm looking forward to this conference, Mark. I think it's going to be absolutely impressive. Folks, uh, you'll see on the screen the, the web address for a Church for All Nations, and you will have the opportunity to register for that. And we want you to uh, make your every plan to get to this conference if you possibly can. Uh, we will be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back to Firebase talking this evening with Pastor Mark Cowart from Church for All Nations in Colorado Springs. You'll see the web address there on the screen for, uh, I think it sounds so cool to say C-Fan, uh, Brother Mark, that's on there, but you'll see the address on there. We showed you a video clip before we went to the break. I was dealing with a, a conference coming up September 15th through the 19th called Equipping the Days Ahead, Prayer, Prophecy, and Spiritual Warfare. And we started with this. I asked you this question, but I want you to fill this out a little bit more about what is this conference all about and who can come? Well, Gary, everybody is welcome to come. Anybody that loves the Lord, desires to see his kingdom advance, but particularly the people that see that this country is a city set on a hill birthed by God. We are one nation under God, but we're acting like a post-Christian nation. And, you know, Gary, I've had this conviction in my heart for so many years. Mark eleven seventeen, 17, Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for Amen. all nations. And then he went on to say, and you remember this was after he purged the temple and cleansed it, but he said, you've made it a den of thieves. And the word thieves in the Greek means to pirate. And when we pirate something, we've gotten an unauthorized use of something. And, and so one of the things that we find is prayer held a part of our founding father's lives that was amazing. And so we really incorporate prayer here at Church for All Nations. My dear friend, Pastor Calvin Johnson, that they saw in the video, we're very close. We go way back in the history of Colorado Springs, and he is a prayer warrior. He doesn't just teach it or talk about it. He does it. And so we've been connected for many years. But the bottom line, we began to, you know, talk about it, pray about it. And we felt the Holy Spirit quicken. And, and both he and, a, and a, one of my other staff, Miss Barb, who's on staff for prayer, they came and said, we just feel there needs to be something uh, that we could do a prayer school or something. So anyway, that was the genesis. And then it evolved into this. And the next thing you know, we just felt the wind of the Holy Spirit at our back. And we have some incredible speakers that I hope we can talk about because we didn't just randomly say, let's pull this person to fill that slot. These are powerful men and women of God that we're going to have here. Yeah, and I'm glad you missed that because that was the next question on my mind. Who are some of the guests that you've got? And you can just go now. We've got seven minutes. You've got plenty of time to go ahead and give me some of the guests and the emphasis they'll be bringing to the conference. Well, you'll notice that the very first one in the video was General Kurt Fuller. Uh, they're a part of CFAN, he and his wife, Sheila. And one of my staff, uh, Sherman Fuller's a command sergeant major from the United States Army, Ranger, and I forget which battalion, but a great blessing to us here. And Amen. 
as it happens, he and General Fuller fought together defending our country. And General Fuller has become a dear friend, but he's more than a, a retired general now. He's a great man of God, very powerful speaker. He was actually inducted into the Ranger Hall of Fame last year and wow. a warrior at heart. But he ministered to our men. And I'll tell you that that meeting, Bill Federer happened to be at that meeting that night when General Fuller spoke. And he said, General Fuller, you need to turn that into a book. Amen. And so he's going to be talking about the parallel between natural warfare and spiritual warfare. So Pastor Calvin and I, I said, you know, Brother Calvin, I said, if I took our church mission, vision, and strategies and put it in front of General Fuller and Sergeant Major Fuller, and we put them there, I wonder how it would do in real warfare where real bullets, <laughs> grenades, and bombs are coming down. Right. I think I knew the answer to it. So we have begun to develop some strategic warfare principles based upon real-life warfare, but carried over into the spiritual realm. Uh, we also have... Uh, Fred Markert, he is one of the greatest minds that I know concerning strategic global warfare, the Great Commission. And Fred has been a friend of mine for long beyond three decades. Wow. We see him on Daystar a lot. And, uh, you know, the Great Commission, Brother Gary, needs to become the Great Completion. And the good wow, news amen. is, we can do it in our lifetime. This is, it's a doable thing. But most churches and ministries don't have any concept of what the Great Commission is. They aren't working toward that end. Right. We're going to be doing that. Another dear friend of mine, Joseph Z, who's really like prophetic journalism. And the Lord allows him to see some things in the prophetic realm and I just, he's a dear friend and uh, really love the gift inside of him. There's also my dear friend, Ed Trout from South Africa, one of the purest, most powerful prophetic gifts, which by the way, Brother Gary, we're going to be having a pastor's luncheon on that Tuesday, and it will be personal ministry to those pastors, prophetic words. But the bottom line, you and I know of this group, it was an elite group called the Black Robe Regiment. That's right. And That's if we're right. going to get this nation back, brother, we've got to we've got to see the pastors rise up. Well, I, I tell you what, I know have uh, uh, Joseph Joseph Z uh, only from having seen him on Victory Channel uh, on uh, Flashpoint, and I thought I like this guy. There was something that agreed within my spirit about him, and uh, either through this conversation or asking you a favor, you say, hey contact me or let me contact him. I'd love to have him on the show. Uh, but here, here's the thing that I wanted you to, to clarify. The final two questions that I've got, I'm going to save to the closing comments. I want you to share, because I've heard you preach it before, about Muhlenberger and about the Black Robe Regiment. Give people, we've got about three minutes, and give them about two minutes, if you possibly can, or two minutes and 30 seconds about that day when he took his robe off. Absolutely. It was January of 1776. He stood up. His text was Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time and a season for everything. And he, he got to the place where it said there's a time for peace and a time for war, and the time for war has come. Who will go and fight? And he reached up, and the reason they called him the Black Robe Regiment is that most pastors of the day wore a black robe. So he reached up, and he took the black robe off, and under was his colonel's uniform, sword at his side, and he said, who will go and fight today? And according to his nephew, about 170 some odd men leaned over, kissed their wives and went into battle. Wow. Over the next few days, some 300 men were gathered up in the Continental Army and they went to battle against the British. Now, what is significant about this, brother? And in fact, you and I have been in Statuary Hall together, taking a tour with David Barton, David right. and Tim. There is, a, you know, each state is allowed two statues. There is a statue of Peter Muhlenberg 
with his robe coming down over his shoulder, revealing his colonel's uniform and his revealed sword. And what you find is that the Black Robe Regiment was not a compliment. It was a backhanded comment by the British against the pastors and the clergy of the day. And here's what they said. If it hadn't been for that Black Robe Regiment, we'd have won this war. Amen. And when they caught the clergy, they treated them brutally. They burned their churches, their houses. They were beaten. They were, they were treated the worst of the worst. And brother, this is what we must see again, a new Black Amen. Road Regiment. Rising. Amen. Amen. And I I tell you what, I uh, in Germany, World War II, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer had his own Black Robe Regiment moment when he stood against the atrocity of Adolf Hitler. And and I tell you what, I, I think I think that every pastor needs to have that Muhlenberg moment uh, today. And, uh, and it's going to have to be... A, a very short answer. Is that what you're hoping will come out of the conference that people will have that Muhlenberg moment? Yes. And, and it's not just for pastors. It's not just for leaders in the church, people that love to pray, but you know, I have this position. Things are better caught than taught. We hope Amen. there's an impartation that takes place. Amen. Folks, I enjoy this uh, conversation, my dear friend, stay tuned. Go get you a cup of Firebase coffee. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Firebase. Thanks for being with us this evening. Uh, I don't know where the time goes, uh, but I've been speaking with uh, a good friend, Pastor Mark Cowart from Church for All Nations there in Colorado Springs. We've been talking about a conference that he has coming up, and he was giving a great illustration about uh, the Reverend Peter uh, Muhlenberg. Uh, and, and if you ever get a chance to hear the story that the diverse views between he and his brother as pastors uh, and, and, and Pastor Mark, I find it curious that when the British attacked, especially in Lexington, they attacked a church and was trying to blow it up. And they knew that they could overthrow. The, it seemed to me it, it's like they could overthrow the nation if they could overthrow the churches and get the pulpit silent. So. Well, as we're wrapping up tonight's show, what are your what what's your big hope? What's what's burning within your spirit? It says this is what I'm praying God will do uh, through this conference and touch people. And you you got about three minutes and twenty seconds. Yeah, well, you know, it, as I shared before the break, there some things are better caught than taught. And Amen. You know, I was of the mind the last thing we need is another conference. I you know we it's like we're conferenced out in America. Well, that's true. I, but what I'm really believing for, you know, some things being caught rather than taught, we're going to have ways to follow up and equip. This is an equipping conference. So we named it Equipping for the Days Ahead. So whether President Trump or Kamala Harris gets in office, brother, we're going to have to be equipped for the days Amen. ahead. Amen. And I know we have a hope, a desire, and a wish, and our prayers are a certain direction. But, brother, there has to be. That's why we brought in Bill Federer in this conference. No one can articulate history. He and David Barton are like national treasures in I my agree. mind. And they will be able, because if we don't know our past, then we won't be able to know who we are or where we're headed. And so... There are some things that I believe God's going to impart to us at this conference. Doesn't, for it, doesn't it go contrary to the current DEI focus and others of like, we need to tear down the monuments and the statues and let's get over oh, this well. stuff and we forget the past? I, I, I find that almost laughable that people say, let's forget the past and forget our Constitution and forget our history. And, you know, I have to say this, by permission of the church, you know, silence, Bill Federer's latest book is called Silence is Consent. In a court of law, it's called tacit admission, Ooh, that there yeah. are things by a person being silent, they can actually be charged with having known something they didn't speak up for. So Amen. the church must rise up. That's our answer, not politics, even though that is very critical and very important. <laughs> You know, if if you can do this, my brother, in a minute or so, how can our nation return to the roots that both John Adams and Benjamin Franklin uh, were talking about, and even Peter Muhlenberg? 
Well, number one, be informed. But Second Chronicles seven fourteen, we all know it. If that's the operative word, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek His face, and then the most key, turn from our wicked ways. Even though we're only one individual, we can have a powerful impact if we will do those four things. We can become the change that we need to see. Amen. Amen. I, I'm glad you used that scripture. I One of the things that I've often spoken with other pastors and other uh, just uh, people in, in the church, so many times we're quick to quote it, but we, we're very hesitant to put it into practice. And we may give it just a you know a cursory prayer, but incumbent is, is to humble ourselves and to pray, to seek God's face and do what? Repent, turn from our wicked ways. My brother, it is always good seeing you, even if it's on the television monitor that's in front of me. And I pray the Lord richly, richly blesses you and this conference. And uh, we're going to ask folks uh, to reach out to Church for All Nations. Again, you'll see the web address on the screen and click to the events and register to attend. You will be glad that you did. And friends, we want you to know that here at Firebase, we always like to target the lies that come at us by firing for effect with God's truth. Until next week, God bless. God bless.